I'm Gene Pointer. I'm president of Pointer Electric. We are a service and new construction contractor in the state of Washington. This fall will make 29 years we've been in business and uh, we're real excited to be working with these electric cars. I think that what we'll do is come out of, you've got two panels here, it's a 400 amp service and um, there's one unused breaker in here so we'll probably change that for the right size. Okay, you'll uh, need a 40 amp breaker and um, we'll take it up probably inside the wall. This will be pretty, this will be unusual that it's so easy to do. Yeah. We'll get it up inside the wall and run through the attic and come down. Now this outside wall, be, well, we need to choose just the location you'd like to have it. We talked about putting it in between the cars so you could park either here right. or here. Yeah, right, right in the middle between the two cars would probably be the best. Alrighty, let's take a look at just where that would be. Right down the middle comes to right about here. Yep. And four feet up. Mark that. Is going to be approximately right this there. Area so right here. That would be, it'll be just about like this. Right. Look something like that, stick out a little bit. The charging dock itself has a long cord that comes out of it. Yep. There's, an op there's two options. There's a 25 foot cord and a 15 foot cord. Uh, you, this is, looks sort of like a little nozzle that you get from a gas pump. Sure. And it's the receptacle under the cord. You take that, plug it into the very front of your car. Right. The thought here is that if you were to get the cord tangled up around the front bumper, yeah. uh, you want it such that when you back out, it pulls the cord right out of the bottom of that and doesn't cause any damage. So there is a safety feature built into the station. This, this is made to come out, and as soon as the cord is, is pulled down, it opens a relay, shuts the power off, and uh, the Here. cord will pop This right cord is never energized until you actually plug it into the car okay. and latch it. Right. And as soon as you latch it, closes the relay in here, energizes the cord. Okay. If someone unplugs it and drops it in the water or a child poke something down it, it would be off. This okay. is uh, intrinsically yeah, safe. Maybe Paul could help me with mm -hmm. this. Let's see, this cord is, if you would hold that little knot right up there about where the cord's coming out on the picture. Um, I'm gonna find my 15 foot mark. This is my 15 foot mark. So you'd easily be able to plug it into the car that was parked here, mm -hmm. or a car over here, plugs right into the center right there. Mm -hmm. The other option is the 25 foot, and with the 25, you would probably be able to back the car in and plug it in uh, right, sure, right in here so that, that or seems, over here. Kind of gives you to give the most versatility, really. Huh? It That's does. The disadvantage of the 25 foot cord is there's just so much more cord to mess with. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> and it's, it's a pretty meaty cord. You said it's about the thickness of your thumb, right? So yes. Probably weighs quite a bit. <laughs> there is a hook that goes on the wall right here that you can roll the cord up on. Okay. And the hook is made for 15 feet of cord. If you get the 25 footer, you're left with a little bit of cord to Hang figure out what I to do. I will end up emailing every, all the information I find here on this assessment to AeroVironment. Okay. Now, I suppose they forward it to Nissan, mm -hmm. um, then they understand what the installation is to be. Now, this looks like it's probably pretty close to a standard installation. A standard <laughs> installation is one that's within 30 feet of the electrical panel, 30 okay. feet of wire. Okay. That's 30 feet of wire. <clears throat> so, I've taken a picture of that. I'm supposed to take a picture of the electrical panel also. If it, if it goes over 30 feet, what, what are that the That becomes a custom things? installation, okay. and, it's, and um, when I submit to Aero Environment my findings, I'll say it's a custom installation, there's going to be an extra five feet, and I describe the situation. It okay. may be more, it may be something that's completely unusual. Uh, right. uh, it might be that uh, it would be a custom installation, I have to go outside the building and all the way down and around the other side. What so. are some of the things that you guys... Uh, how many of these have you, how many inspections have you done? I've done 19, 19 inspections 19. so far, so this okay. is sort of a new program. Right. But I have run into a case where the people had a basement, 
Right. The electrical panel was in the far end of the basement, and the garage is on the other end of the house, up at the <sighs> second level. So we have to come out of the panel, and in this particular case, the ceiling was open right. through the basement. So we'll be able to go through the basement, across a bathroom, up into the garage wall, over to the other side of the garage. Pretty extensive right. installation. Some some others are much easier. Most are easier. So a lot of our readers are probably going to be curious about what the uh, the warranty is when they get it installed from Air Environment for this uh, the, the charging station. Could you comment on that? Sure, absolutely. So Air Environment supplies a three-year full on-site warranty when we do the installation of the charging box. So if you ever have any issues, the contractor will come out to your location. They have a proprietary service tool that they can actually test the unit. This is special to the AV contractors. It simulates the Nissan LEAF so they can identify if there's a charging issue or any utility pro power problems. And, uh, and for this reason, we, you know, we really recommend that you use our service so for a renter or if you don't own that home, then what you need is a modify, a consent to modify form. And that is downloadable off of the Nissan uh, LEAF website. Uh, also, some other considerations are if you work or if you live in a homeownership uh, association, HOA, then we also have an HOA approval form. Because many times there's, uh, there are restrictions to whether or not you can leave your garage door open or sure or put a, a basketball court in your front yard. And if you live under some of those types of restrictions, we ask that you get approval. When we install this for the homeowner, we'll be using a torque screwdriver and torque wrenches to make sure that all the screws and the parts are put together with the proper torques, nothing stripped out. After we're all done, we have a box at Aero Environment Supplies that we'll plug the cord into, and it puts a simulated load on it, test for the GFI, uh, test to make sure that everything's in good shape. And after we're done, uh, we will, as electrical contractor, be stocking replacement parts. We'll have a uh, complete replacement uh, charging docks and replacement cords and, and other parts uh, so that if you have a problem, if you were to destroy this somehow or another or something goes wrong, when we come out, we'll have an all new one. Take it off the wall, put the new one on, and you're back up and running right away, uh, that's going to be, of course, a, uh, a priority to get right out and get these fixed if anything goes wrong.